it's time. It's time for the meeting. Would you please silence your telephones? Would you please rise with me and for the Pledge of Allegiance? Crystal, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United, United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councillor Wood. Present. Councillor Escabel. Present. Councillor Allen. Present. Councillor Hardy. Present. Councillor Nicely. Yes. Councillor Vendetti. Present. Mayor Villagrana. Present. Now, the next item is approval of the agenda with additions, directions, or corrections. Are there any changes to the agenda? I, we are discussing approval of the agenda, and uh, I am asking the council if there's any corrections, deletions, or if we need to pull any of them. Ms. Harding? Do we need, Mr. Escobel? No. Mr. Allen? No. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nicely? No. Ms. Witt? No. No. May I have a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the consent agenda, items 5A and 5B. Second. Discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Nisley? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. The next item that we have is a consent agenda. No, we just did that. Okay. I'm sorry. Administrative information. City manager, please. You have my man you have my manager report. Are there any questions? Is it what you wanted to see from me? Yes. Okay. So I, I will continue in that vein to provide you with a detailed manager's report, yes. Yeah, um, I seen that was mentioned in that uh, on the shares from Coal Creek. Yes, uh, yes. And, and we're gonna talk about that later in the- Councilor uh, Allen, could you use your microphone, please? And we're gonna talk about that later. We can uh, talk right? about it now if you'd wish. Um, well, at some time, I mean, we, when we're talking about the one from Coal Creek. You're talking about the shares? Yes. Um, well, I mean, we well, can. We're going to have discussion on that tonight, though. Yeah, right? I mean, let's have. To, well, yeah, we're going to have. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda, okay. so we can discuss we'll it now it or then. Okay. No, we'll talk about it. All right. Any reports, uh, Mr. Vendetti? No report. Ms. Wood? No report. No Mr. Report, Allen? Sir. Mr. Nicely? No. Mr. Escobel? No report. Ms. Harding? No report. Uh, as for myself, I attended uh, three meetings. I attended the uh, merchants meeting uh, last month. I attended the mayor to mayor conference with uh, our city manager and our city clerk. And uh, I was scheduled to attend a meeting for the VA. Unfortunately, city business came up and I did not make it, but I am scheduled to attend their council meeting on the 14th with the VA at the Canyon City uh, Courthouse. Uh, I also am going to go to Cripple or to uh, Coal Creek tomorrow and uh, as support because we do have fiber optics but they are uh, trying to get fiber optics for the small entities. So when I come back I will give you guys a report next week. And that's about it for me. Our next is a statement by Councilor Mrs. Melissa Hardy, please. I think we need public comments, comments oh, first, sorry. Mayor. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? Yeah. Please. I didn't see that. State your name and your address, please. Pardon me, I'm a little slow today with my knee aching. I got some work done on it today. 
Uh, my name is Mark Sullivan, 624th. I have uh, some items to bring up that I'd like to pass out some information to people. And I'll read them real quick. Okay, I'm reading this statement on behalf of a friend of mine and myself and former employee of the city who couldn't attend tonight and shall remain anonymous. Since the citizens of Florence and residents of Fremont County cannot be certain as to the type of legal advice the city council has received in chambers, we wanted to draw council attention to some specific state statutes that should be of concern to the statue in lieu of recent discoveries and shall not be taken lightly. Colorado Revised Statute 18-1-504, Criminal Culpability. Effect of ignorance or mistake upon culpability. One, a person is not relieved of criminal liability for conduct because he engaged in that conduct under a mistaken belief of fact. A person is not relieved of criminal liability for conduct because he engages in that conduct under a mistaken belief that does not, as a matter of law, constitute an offense. Colorado Advised Statutes 18-8-115, Part 1, relates to obstruction of public justice. Duty to report a crime, liability for disclosure. It is the duty of every corporation or person who has reasonable grounds to believe that a crime has been committed to report it promptly, the suspected crime to law enforcement authorities. CRS 188-407 is embezzlement of public property. In Colorado states, every public servant who lawfully or unlawfully comes into possession of any public monies or public property of whatever description, being the property of the state or of any political subdivision of the state and who knowingly converts any of such monies, public monies or property to his own use or to any use other than the public use authorized by law is guilty of embezzlement of public property. Colorado Revised Statute 1817104 is prohibited activities. It is unlawful for any person who knowingly has received any proceeds derived directly or indirectly from a pattern of racketeering activity or through the collection of an unlawful debt, whether directly or indirectly. CRS 8-2-102 is a coercion of employees. It is unlawful for any individual company or corporation or any member or firm or any agent, officer, or employee of any company or corporation to coerce or attempt to coerce employees by discharging or threatening to discharge them from their employ. Colorado bribery laws is CRS 18-8-302 in Colorado, offering money or another benefit to a public servant or official to influence their action is bribery. CRS Title 44 Part 1, Motor Vehicle Dealers, uh, includes 44-2101 uh, and 44-2142. That list is really long, but it may be of interest of uh, all of you in Florence, since Florence has previously engaged in the used car business. We would appreciate it if the council would give considerable thought to the Colorado state statutes laid before you, as denial and avoidance of these issues have become quite costly. Florence city officials do not get to decide whether they perceive these offenses as legal, as legal or not this time. Florence is not above the law. We the people are insisting on an investigation into the city to be conducted by a higher law enforcement authority. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for the gentleman? Anybody else need a copy? Thank you, Mark. Thank you.
Anyone else wish to address the council? If not, Please state your name and address. My name is Wendell Helton. I live at 1920 North 7th in Canyon City. And I stand before you today uh, as we the people and not me the people. All right, there's a book called Extreme Ownership written by a Navy SEAL called Jocko Willick. I suggest everybody read that. We need extreme ownership to take ownership of what we do. I'm a business owner. I take extreme ownership of what I do. I want we as a team. It's not me that builds the house. It's we that built the damn house. We need to take ownership of what we're doing. We need to step up to the plate and figure this out. You guys have a culture problem and it was caused by one bad apple a culture problem. We want a culture of winning. We want to bring people into the city of a culture of winning. Does everybody agree? A culture of winning. It's a culture problem that we have, that you guys have. We need to fix the culture problem. We, us, the people, you as council. I, I, I don't know how else to make it clear. It's we. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about them. It's we. And what are we going to do to fix the culture? What are you guys going to do to fix the culture? You guys are elected to be leaders, to take ownership of the things that happen in this city. And it's not acceptable to play ignorance and say, I can't say it because my attorney advised me not to. We, culture, winning, ownership. My next question is, is who's gonna embrace the sock to come up with that? Who's gonna do that? It's gonna suck. You guys got a terrible culture here. You know, I've been trying to get a subdivision going and I finally got it passed 26 months later. Now it's gonna cost me three times the amount to put the infrastructure in because the culture here with the previous leadership here was terrible. Kick the can down the road. We, I'd send them emails. What can we do? What can I do to help? What can we do to make this go faster? And it was always passing the buck off to somebody else. City attorney, oh, it's the planning. It's, oh, it's the city manager. But it's we, it's we. And I recommend that everybody here, in here, all of us look at it as we, because it's we the people, it's not me. And if anybody is self-centered enough to think that it's me, just like Mr. Sullivan said, and think they're above the law, then they need to be going down the road. I've bit my tongue for two years, and I'm not gonna do it no more. It's we, and I wanna be a part of the solution. I don't wanna be a part of the problem, and everybody here should be part of the solution, not part of the damn problem. Do we, do we all agree with that? Yeah. I mean, do we all agree with that? You know, so what are we gonna do to fix the culture problem here? What are we gonna do we got, you guys got some great people working for you, and I see these ladies, like seven or eight, nine of them, quit in two years. And I'm like, what the heck's going on here? It's because we have a culture problem, and we need to fix the culture problem. But my question is, is who's gonna embrace the suck to do it? Because it's gonna suck, I guarantee you. Being a business owner, I thought it was about me until I embraced the suck, evolved, changed my attitude. It's we, it's me, my guys, subcontractors, my engineers, it's the building department. It's all these people that collectively come together and execute a project to make it a success. 
And that's not happening here. We need to execute. We need to execute. That's all I got to say. Any discussion or questions for the gentleman? No, thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to do, uh, address the council? Thank you. We'll go on with the uh, agenda. We have 6A statement by Councillor Melissa Harding, please. Thank you. Um, so in Florence's pursuit to have a brighter future, one of the most basic things this council has to do is remain vigilant in evaluating the employees that we oversee. Um, and currently, I have drawn the conclusion that we should be concerned about the performance of our city attorney. Over the last six months, I feel that he has been, his response to city staff and to the council has been lethargic. I think his uh, legal advice has at times been inadequate. And I think he has struggled to fulfill the directives he has been given by this council. So tonight I would like to make the motion that we terminate Matt Crobb as our city attorney and that upon his termination he returns all files he possesses related to the city of Florence, including those that are physical and electronic. Discussion? Uh, before we go on, can I have a second on that motion? Second. Discussion? Mr. Escobel? None. Mr. Nisley? None. Mr. Allen? None. Ms. None. Witt? Mr. Vedetti? None. I have none. May I have a roll call from a vote, please? Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. The next thing on our agenda is a city manager report. Mr. Pollinger? <clears throat> Any questions on my city manager report? I think it was thorough, thank you. It was very appreciated. I'm assuming it got posted to the web. Not the most technical, savvy person you've ever run into. Um, obviously, if, if citizens want to question me on that, have a, have a question, want to discuss, you know, give me a call. Door's always open. Uh, come and tell me what you need from me and we will drive on. Um, the manager report is how I will communicate with council and the citizens. Uh, it's what I did in an earlier stint as city manager. It worked fairly well then. Um, um, so that's the way I'm gonna continue. And uh, certainly if you have anything that you need to talk to me, please, please let me know. And council give me feedback on this report. Um, so that I can make it better in the future. That's all I have. Unless you have questions. Any questions? No, I will make a statement on this. Uh, Council, I will tell you that I'm very pleased with our intern city manager. He has gone. First of all, he went to the mayor's round table with our city clerk. And that, that's been a case of, but he went with knowledge. We have, one of our main concerns is water in Florence. And I am very pleased to tell you that our intern city manager is very, very knowledgeable. And the question come up that we'll discuss later concerning water. But, he, but I will also tell you that he also came to the Pioneer Museum's meeting. And uh, he asked questions and he gave us information from the city standpoint. And that's the first time we've ever seen somebody at one of those meetings. And I will tell you what, that we have a city manager that is active within the community of Florence. And 
I asked him if he planned on going to the merchants meeting, and he said yes. And I will tell you what, we gotta be proud of this gentleman because he is doing things and looking out for the citizen of Florence in all aspects. Anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Piltinger, thank you for this comprehensive report, just detailing what you've been doing throughout the week, keeping us up to date on on every aspect as you go. It's, I love how comprehensive it is, and I love how it really puts us all on the same page. So thank you very much, and thank you for your willingness to step in at this time. Thank you. Bef before we move on, um, and I hate to interrupt the flow, it's just that um, with my motion passing, I do think uh, before we get too further down the agenda, we need to discuss the fact that we now don't have a city attorney. And I just wanted to say, obviously, <laughs> this is an issue. We need to have legal representation. Um, so I would like to direct um, Councillor Brian Allen to begin the search for a local attorney to represent us to fill that position interim starting immediately. We have city business we need to attend to, and we need to get that filled by a quality person. So if the council agrees, um, I'm making that motion that Brian Allen begin that search. I'll second it. <clears throat> Got a motion and a second. A discussion, please. Input. If not, roll call, please. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Escabel? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Nicely? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. The next item is a scheduled guest speaker, Mr. Jordan. Your address, please, sir. 844 Sumo Avenue. I have a lot of information, so I'm going to be here a while. So, but I, most of it's your own packet, okay? So could you pass them down? I got an outline here, but I'm going to bounce around. So I didn't give you the outline because then we'd really be here longer. <clears throat> so one of those, the first thing is the uh, interim city manager's council report citing HR uh, Ann Levine, or Levine from Employers Council. Last year there was a staffing assessment done. The city paid for paid for uh, $1,696.25. Tom, have you been made aware of that? Yes, I have. Do you I have, have a copy? Seen it. I have not seen it yet, but I've been made aware of it. I got one for you. So the second thing is, um, is she thinking about doing another one? Can we get like half off since it's been under two years? <laughs> not that I'm aware of, Tim. Okay. The fr uh, and here in your report, the forensic audit, this is going to be kind of a touchy subject. I'm going to kind of try and loop this in. I see you've reached out with uh, Commissioner Debbie Bell asking for assistance. A forensic audit's been asked for for quite some time. Within the last couple of years, you could have went from the big D to Pathfinder and not touched the ground without seeing a sign follow the money. What I find kind of disturbing is it took an outside reporter to come here and calculate stuff and come up that you are missing money. It doesn't matter if it's $10 or $2,000 and all the other stuff she's found. And what bothers me is it took her to come in here and find all this stuff in a short amount of time. And we don't know where, what else is missing if anything is missing. So my suggestion is you contact CBI, you lock the doors, and you do an investigation. I want to know where every penny is went. I've core requested Ms. Brenzel's core request today, or last <laughs> week. I want every record that's come out of here, all of it. All of it. If she would not have done this, we would not have found out about the, the wage advances. We would not have found out about the money that's still owed. So, like I said, I'm going to bounce around. <clears throat> so, anyways, in her story, can we she, discuss the? Can I discuss the uh, forensic audit? Please. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, the first motion you made after you appointed me as the interim city manager was to direct me to conduct a forensic audit. Um, not really knowing what a forensic audit really was, um, I called Sonny Barnes at the county, who was my finance officer when I was here in my earlier stint, and talked to Sonny about 
what the forensic audit really means, and of course it is an audit looking for criminal activity. Uh, such an audit, um, she said, is only done by a very few specialized firms, and that um, it would cost upwards of at least three times that, much, that amount that we have already budgeted for our annual audit, which will begin March 28th. So we have a regular auditor coming in on the 28th to do the annual audit, and in the meantime, we have a forensic audit kind of hanging out there. Now, we have not budgeted 60 plus thousand dollars for a forensic audit. Uh, we have, of course, budgeted for our annual audit. So in talking with Sonny, I suggested to her uh, a, an idea to conduct a more involved audit, but far short of a forensic audit. And that audit would sort of take the scheme of Sonny would look at, of course, Sonny knows the financials as well as, as Lori or anybody else. Sonny and Lori are the two most knowledgeable individuals on the planet as it concerns our financials. So I would have Sonny look at areas in the, in the financials in our budget that might be more susceptible to hanky-panky than others. Sonny has agreed to do that, to identify to me those areas which might be more susceptible. I mean, obviously, the cemetery fund is not a fund that anybody would try to take money from. But there are other funds, perhaps in the general fund or the water fund, where, you know, maybe somebody might think that anything could be done. My review of the financials doesn't indicate any issue there, but I'm not an auditor, I'm certainly not a forensic auditor. I did talk to the auditor who's coming down the 28th and suggested to her that she look at certain areas of our financials as, part, as a kind of a lead in to her audit to give us an indication of whether there might be really something there to look at or not for a forensic audit, and she has agreed to do that. So she will be coming down one or two days earlier. We will have to expand the scope of work that she is going to conduct. It's going to cost us a little more money to have her do this, but I think that will give us a little better snapshot through our audit of the state of our finances. And that is the way I would like to approach this audit. Remember, we do not have $60,000 budgeted for a forensic audit. If something turns up, then we go to a forensic audit. We do a scope of work, an RFP. Um, we figure out where we're going to find the money to do it, and we go forward with it. But let's look at this in an interim, an increment, instead of a whole hog forensic, because we already have an audit planned. Anybody have any ideas about that? We'll have a question, maybe you can find the answer for me. I don't expect you to have it right now. Um, these discrepancies that are showing up now, we have a certified audit every year. Yeah. Why is it that these discrepancies weren't noticed? Well, he did, he did notice the uh, wage advances in the 2017 audit. He did a management paragraph, which is where an auditor will identify an area that management, me, or whoever sits here, should take a closer look at the practice of. So those, those, those advances um, were, were a management uh, paragraph in the 2017 audit. That's something that never was in front of our eyes, correct? Well, I can't speak to that. I, yeah. I mean, clearly that's... I mean, we pay, we pay yeah. an auditor a lot of money to tell us that these books are correct. Yes. So we expect to believe that those books are correct. And the books were correct, according to the auditor, accepting this uh, wage advance where there was some money's not paid back yet. Okay. And the auditor noted that. Any other? I have a question. Yeah. Um, that's fine and good, but we, these, some of these things I think uh, legal should look at. I mean, uh, the police department, investigator. Um, I've reached out to... CBI, but they, of course, need to come in at the direction of the police department. So I'd like to ask that you direct our police department to please contact CBI and bring them in to see some of these 
documentations um, so we can actually see what's wrong. So, can can I ask something? Yes. Is it up to the police to determine if it's if there is sufficient reason to call in CBI? Because if we're looking for them for guidance, then just given that they're underneath our budget too, that we might uh, look for another another agency to look at it to contact CBI because that seems like it could be a conflict. That yeah, I I have already <laughs> reached out to CBI and they told me that they have to have an agency call them. So is that something that, that we could do, Shane, is you could contact them and have them at least come in and start looking at some of this stuff? I can do that. I know I've contacted them before when somebody wanted to, uh, for example, make a criminal allegation against an officer. Um, they usually require an internal investigation to give them a direction. Um, so if you have something that I can specifically tell them, then um, I don't know why they wouldn't be able to do that. The loans that of taxpayer money that was not uh, approved by city council and some other things that that Tim has here too also so if if we could and absolutely I've, I'll get with Tom tomorrow and we'll reach out to them it's been a little difficult since uh, there's already a pending litigation and the district attorney's office has removed themselves locally from um, from that situation so I have reached out to numerous agencies so if you could please do that, I'd appreciate that. I will, thank you. Uh, just so I could be clear, uh, <coughs> Chief, you, you wouldn't be in a position of determining whether this is something they should look at or not. And if you are, would that be something you would consider giving to, off to another agency just because? So I would feel like it would definitely be a con conflict of interest for us to look into it. Thank you. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is, like I said, pointing them in a direction maybe and saying, here's what we want to look into. Um, I don't know what their procedure is for that. I've never had to do that, obviously. If we could but just get them a hold of uh, Tom, absolutely. I think that's that's where we'd like to see this go. As Tom has continued um, communication with this council, I think that's where we'd like to see that that start. I'll do that. Thank you. And I think that we do need to get hold of Tom and Lori. And in the event that it would go against our budget, we have to be able to be able to if we go to somebody else besides CBI that we could actually handle it within the budget. Brian, do you think that needs to pass by a motion, or are we good just giving direction? Are we good just giving direction? I think you're just giving direction. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. giving direction. Yep. Can I speak now? Yep. Okay. So moving on, uh, in your council packet, that you all received, there was a letter from Tom Pilton's room um, indicating at the last line, I may get this incorrect. It, there's uh, from the documents Ms. Brinselcore requested and the letter she got, and then the letter that council got, the last sentence is there's a dis small discrepancy. Uh, her investigation found a $2,021.55 amount owed to the city from wage advances. And the exact letter at the bottom, it says her investigation found $1,535.02 amount to, uh, owed to the city for wage advances. So you all got one, she got another. I spoke with Laurie about it on Friday. I got an acceptable answer. It was just I, assumingly a mistake. So that's what's in your packet. You should have two of these. And one on, one says two thousand, one says fifteen hundred. So which which one's mine? Fifteen hundred. I'm not telling. Oh. You figure that one out. This is, this Come is on, 2, Tim. Uh -uh. <laughs> mm -mm. I think yours is two thousand. <coughs> so moving on, uh, in her story, uh, Chelsea Brinsel indicated the terminated city manager. I'm using your acronym, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Received $4,000 in employee advances and loans. According to the terminated city manager's vendor inquiry, which you all have, the terminated city manager received $5,000. According to the ledger, he received $4,000. There's two checks on the ledger. I have them marked. Okay? There's an arrow, and it will say P. So there's two checks, $4,000, in the amount of $3,000. And then the other one's in the amount of 1000 for a total of 4000 I know this is sounding crazy, but it, it is. It's money. 
However, an additional check in the amount of $1,000 and dated 1119 2015 is listed on the terminated city manager's vendor inquiry with the amount 1,000 circled and with the word advance written in the column discount given. However, this amount is not accounted for on the ledger. I contacted the finance officer, Lori Cobbler, on Friday and asked her for some information regarding this discrepancy. I received what I felt was an acceptable answer. Okay. My question is, is this an acceptable practice to write a check out for disperse disbursement but not place it on the ledger? What else is missing from the ledger? <laughs> Uh, here's the other thing. Why do a reporter have to request these records to be reviewed pursuant to an open <coughs> records request? Quite a few of us in this community have asked for a forensic audit or an audit. Follow the money, the whole nine yards. My question is, when was Patterson's vendor history reconciled after you all terminated him on the 31st? Did anybody go back and compare his vendor history with the ledger? Because if they did, they would have found what I just was talking about. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. I'm taking Lori's word that that $1,000 that's on the vendor history, that check was never, I, I believe she said it was paid back pretty quickly. I think it was immediately. You can ask her that. Also, the employee advance agreements that, that, that did exist were not enforceable. I don't think I read in there anywhere that if an employee or in your manual, if that employee was terminated, fired, resigned, quit, whatever, they could have walked away and you would have had no recourse whatsoever. All it was, was a promissory note. The second thing is, or third thing is, uh, the 2017 audit referenced $35,000 approximately in total employee advances with 23,000 still outstanding. Why were these wage uh, advances allowed to take place in violation of the employee policy manual excluding Mike Patterson? I came here in October and they made you all aware under his original contract, the policy manual didn't apply to him. So I'm wondering, why was he able to circumvent that and, and, and let the employees do that? I don't see where he had the authority to do that, one, because the, the, the manual didn't apply to him. But it, in the manual that, that the employees had to follow, it was clearly written in there. And I've seen the bills allowed. I'm wondering if those came in front of council and you all voted on them. Something you all might want to check. The 2013 audit with PowerPoint had a PowerPoint management letter explaining deficiencies and weaknesses. I believe there were seven. I think there were some material weaknesses or something like that. So what did the city do? The city went with a new auditor the next year. Same way you did with Travelers and Sursa. <clears throat> okay, this, this one here under number four, I'm curious, I, I spoke with the city clerk last week, I don't know how many core requests I've filed, how many Jessica, 20? At least. <laughs> okay, how many people, how many staff, how many council have come into your office and asked what I filed for, what Ms. Brinsel's filed for, anyone? As of now, how many council people have come in and asked? I have had no council members come in and ask for quotas. So would you guys rather walk down the hall and find out what's going to pop on the news or I'm going to come in here? Or would you rather just wait till the news comes in? She's got a mirror of information. There's a lot of stuff. Everything I've asked for, I get. All you have to do is walk down the hall. You can walk down her hall and ask about finances. I'm just a little perplexed with all this going on. No one's went down to her office at all. City of Fountain Vehicles. I didn't know the City of Florence's mission statement was to procure used vehicles and flip them for a profit. So I core requested the 19 vehicles that the City of Florence purchased from the City of Fountain. On the ledger, there's four vehicles and a Jeep, okay? What happened to the other 14 vehicles? How much money did you all make? Where did the money go from payroll deductions? What fund did it go into? I'd like to know that. So I've core requested Jessica for some of that information. I just, I didn't think that the city of Florence was in the habit of purchasing cars. 
from another from another agency and flipping them for triple the profit or double the profit, whatever you want to call it, what they got paid for. It's all right in here. I have all of it. So my question is, how much was the profit for each vehicle and what fund was the payroll deductions for these deposited in from employees? What is the current status of the remaining 14 vehicles? Are any of these vehicles in the city of Florence's current fleet inventory? What happened to them? So you got payroll deductions for four of them. There was 19 vehicles. I don't know if the Jeep was a part of it. It doesn't say Jeep on their fleet inventory. How are the other vehicles sold? Where'd the money go to? Uh, this, this sixth one I believe I'm on. I'm getting close to being done, just in case you're wondering. Mike DeLorenis. An agreement upon retirement by and between Mike DeLorenis and the city of Florence and city collectively referred to the parties was made on September 19th, 2019, effective September 23rd, 2019. Please refer to severance amount and payment. It should be in your packet. The parties agreed that the city has paid in full in terms and benefits earned and accrued through DeLorenis' employment through the effective date of 9-23-2019. Additionally, the city agrees to pay severance to De Laurentiis, which the parties acknowledge and agree is impartial considerations for province, promises and covenants contained within this agreement. The severance pay in is a total amount of $32,281.60, consisting of three months severance, 400 hours of vacation and sick leave. Was paying De Laurentiis some of these monies in violation of the city's personnel and policy manual, personal leave. Upon termination or resignation, employee will not be reimbursed for an accrued sick leave on the books. You guys never saw the contract. It was signed between Delarinus and, and Patterson. Was he even in the position to negotiate that on your behalf? Was the employee, well, okay, sorry about that. Was the terminated city manager acting in his capacity to negotiate this agreement? And when was the authority given to him and by whom? He was negotiating an agreement based on a manual that didn't even apply to him. Was the city council aware of this agreement as no councilor nor the mayor signed it, only Patterson and DeLaurentis? Was this agreement a result of the city of Florence's special city council meeting held the day before on September 18, 2019, a meeting that required two executive sessions, one to receive legal advice from the city attorney and the second regarding a personnel matter? Ironically, the, the terminated city manager who handled the HR personnel matters wasn't present for the meeting, nor was he invited into the meeting according to the meeting minutes. Was this special meeting, meeting and subsequent executive session a result of any pending litigation at that time? The police report specifically says an agreement was signed with the former city clerk on, I believe, September 13th. And then ironically, a couple days later, the city has a special meeting with two executive sessions, personnel and legal, and Patterson's not in it. And De Laurentiis retires the next day. I believe I forgot this part. Vacation may be taken as, as a cured. Sick leave may only be utilized for the employee and may be taken as a cured. I believe I might have messed up in here, but I believe the policy manual says you can't cash in your sick leave or your vacation either. So I'm wondering why that happened. Some of you all were here. What happened at that special meeting that night? September 13th, you, the, the agreement come in. You all signed it. The city signed it. It's right here in the police report. Somewhere. It's right here. A document titled release, which is the signed agreement, and which indicated the city's agreement to a monetary settlement of $54,290.85 dated 9-13-2019. And five days later, council has an executive session. And Delarinus retires the next day. You guys have the agreement. Was it a legal agreement? How, 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 what's up? The policy manual was pretty clear when it came to sick and vacation. He just did whatever he wanted. Last thing I got is several months ago, it was brought to my attention that the Saturday after Mr. Patterson was put on admin leave, there was a personnel issue here at City Hall. 
I got the transcript from dispatch. Did Mr. Patterson come back here unauthorized? There's the record. There's the transcript. There's records I've asked for that don't exist. Did he come back in here and take them or someone else? Kind of odd to have a personnel issue on a Saturday at City Hall at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and the former mayor has to call the police. I hope nothing's missing. Does anybody have any questions? We have a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do. Do you guys want to you guys want a transcript and the CD of the uh, call to dispatch? Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. No, Tim, thank you. And, and thank you to Chelsea. Thank you to Lori and Maury Aves. Thank you to every every citizen. I, I had coffee with Tim just the other day to, to look at some of the documentation he has. There was a lot of people that were right, and there was a lot of people that were wrong. I would like to thank Chelsea for all your help. Because we, I, some of the stuff I hadn't, had never, th never seen. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, there was one other question I had, and I forget what it was. Oh, yes. I did core request all of Chelsea's core requests that have been uh, fulfilled. I believe there's some she has submitted and she has not got. I want every record that everyone has asked for. I want the Florence Citizens. I want the Daily Records. I want the Crusaders. And I want the KRDOs. I'm going to go over this stuff. I spent all weekend looking at this. And there was, I'm sorry, now that I'm up here talking, I'm not going to shut up. So I apologize. There's one thing I wanted to bring up about this. There's the ledger, this ledger that Lori had done. Can I see yours? Of course. I hope it's in here. Okay, well, since I've been bouncing around it, here it is under the personal leave, 803 annual rate. An employee may, na may not take money in exchange for vacation. Vacation may be taken as is a, as a cure accrued. I believe the new policy manual allows that. So when this was done under the old policy manual, I don't know why it was done. So on this here, this ledger, you will see uh, in Lori's report that there was a, an amount undoc non no documentation or owed of $2,021.55. I believe that's correct. You will see to the right of Della Rennes, an arrow with D owed $1,172.02. It's either owed or no documentation. Uh, the, the arrow with the P is, is the, two, the two checks for Patterson. So my question, I guess, is this. When, when Della Rennes did all this stuff with Patterson, however it come out, I think when, you, when the city releases an employee, things need to be reconciled financially that way that you're not going to have something come back from someone that I mean this is quite old the document he may have paid it there's no documentation and so my thing is I think you should implement a policy to where employees when they're discharged retired or whatever that you take care of all your your finances and make sure everything's reconciled so then you're not having to come back and figure out things years later thank you thank you Tim thank you yeah thank you Tim any comments discussion yes sir I'm sorry, I should have been thinking. Um, the reason I say that I disagree with you on that, somewhere you had $52,000 to give to, to uh, Mike, and now we ain't got 60000 to do a forensic audit. And a lot of things that Tim has brought up. 
Uh, I got a little hunch, just a gut feeling that I'm probably speaking for most everybody in this room that I'm not willing to buy the initial little on it. We need the whole thing done for all of us, for we. Thank you. No further discussion. The next item we have is uh, any other old business that we need to discuss? City clerk? I don't believe so. City manager? No. City council members? So let's go to action items. Number one, bills allowed. Finance officer Cobbler, please. I'm sorry, Mayor. First, we have uh, discussion, discussion items. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping the gun. Tim, rattle my brain. The session item. The 4th of July discussion. Is Cortland here? Hi. Good evening, Council. Um, I guess it's just kind of come to my attention that you were wanting an update on all of the events that we've kind of taken care of. So we, the city of Florence, began planning and collaborating for our July 4th festival in January. Since the initial meeting, we've had multiple internal discussions and conversations pertaining to fundraising ideas, organizational structuring, job assignments, fireworks, entertainment events, etc. Currently, we're working to establish a wine and paint event through Emily Ramsey's Evolve Painting, a shooting skeet tournament, a golf tournament at Sumo, and a bingo night held at our local Elks Lodge. We have other fundraising ideas, but have not solidified employees to host, plan, and execute them yet. We had success with our first event, a karaoke contest held at Florence's Oak Creek Tavern and Grill. We wanted to thank everyone again for participating, competing, and supporting our fundraising efforts. We were able to raise around $600 in award prizes donated from Three Iron Construction, True Value, and Mantiques. Although not complete, all events, applications, and information can be found on the July 4th tab on the city webpage. You'll also find there a chili and pie cook-off, a silent auction, and an all-age-inclusive sidewalk art contest planned for April. Information will also be shared to the city's Facebook page when necessary or applicable. Our next meeting is tomorrow at 2 p.m. to ensure accountability and progression with assigned tasks and goals. Soon we will begin deeper collaboration with the community, local businesses, and organizations in regards to sponsorships, participation, and expectations. If you or the community have questions pertaining to anything July 4th related, please email me with questions or concerns as I am the head of July 4th planning. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, I do. Number one, council. Have you ever been asked about what's going on with the 4th of July? Have you ever had any input? Yes. Mm -hmm. Crystal and okay. I helped, I think in 2020 when it was crazy trying to figure it out. So we participated, but before that, we we were sitting in, in the planning. Like we were it, part of the committee. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Uh, the other thing is, uh, any of this money coming from the budget? Is it budgeted for? What was the amount? $25,000. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any discussion on this? Comment. Uh, um, I happen to have an in with the floor, uh, Bell Tower Arts Center. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can probably, I think I can probably wrangle some money from the Bell Tower for your sidewalk art project. Sure. Because that's one of their missions is support art. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So. Do you, do you think the drive-in will be a thing again this year? The drive-in is absolutely a thing. We're still pending on which movie. Um, I posted a poll on Facebook maybe about two months ago to see what the community liked best. Um, I think I'm going to post it one more time and then close it so that we can purchase the copyright for it. Cortland, ma'am, I'm going to ask you, Canyon City is celebrating 150 years. Florence is also, for anybody's information, Florence is 150 years old when they first platted our community. Is there any possibility of maybe uh, 
having a celebration in, in some kind of terms. Uh, I know the museum is doing a 150-year celebration, but I, I think that uh, maybe somewhere along the line we should be looking into that aspect. And, you know, the 4th of July uh, would seem to me like it would be a good idea, but, uh, Cortland, that would be something that you might want to look at. Sure. I know that the Florence Brewing Company has offered, you know, as they do with a lot of businesses and uh, organizations in the community, they have offered to kind of co-sponsor something with us. Um, things have just been a little hectic as of late, and it is, you know, kind of on on the board to do something with. We just haven't executed any plans or had any discussions is all. Yeah, I, uh, I also know that our neighbors to the east of us, Portland, is celebrating mm -hmm. 140. So, you know, that's something that uh, most of our people work there. We might be looking at, I know that the museum and, and the brewery is uh, connecting with Portland on celebrating theirs, and I think that maybe we as a community should also look at that. Sure. And Cortland, I'm just throwing out ideas to you. <laughs> but thank you. Okay. Thanks, Council. Thank you. Sales tax. Ms. Cobbler, please. All right, good evening, Council. Um, page 21 of your packet will show sales tax collected through uh, December 2021. Um, represents 13% growth over last year. Um, March and December, as you can see, are our highest dollar amounts. Um, if looking a little bit ahead to the PowerPoint that I came up with for the financials um, going forward, I'm going to break down um, as best as I could. You know that sales tax is a confidential for uh, the businesses, but I will break them down in a section of my financial reports every month so you can kind of see that. Um, it's something that we did previously that we'll get back to so we can kind of see exactly where that growth is coming from, whether it's um, out-of-state ta tax collection through online sales, through retail um, brick and mortar, or through restaurants and hotels or franchise um, energy taxes. So um, going forward on um, next month, I'll start breaking that down for you. Um, but as you can see, um, very healthy growth in sales tax. We budgeted based on that healthy uh, growth in sales tax, and uh, we will continue to see that. Um, one thing that I do want to, to make note, as you can see, we have our 2% and then our half percent. Um, just a note, so we can keep that, um, that half, half, half percent um, does sunset in 2025. So that is something that we probably need to start looking at and see um, what the plan for that. And you know, that is the streets fund. It was the pool fund. Now it's the streets fund. So if that's something just to have in the back of your mind as we continue, we don't want to wait till that lapses before we start looking at that. I think we really need to look at that. So um, any questions on sales tax? You know, I do think it's uh, vital that uh, we do see the breakdown as to where the sales tax is coming. Nope, I you agree. Know, I, I really do, and I really hope that you can break it down and show everybody where what's happening in Florence in terms of money spent. Yeah. You know, and uh, as the gentleman from Canyon City mentioned, we, you know, and, and I think that we includes all the entities plus Canyon Cities. I will tell you that I think that we have the best restaurants in the whole wide world. <laughs> Since you're up there, I'm up there. Uh, Council, do we have any questions for her? I think I'm staying up here for a little bit yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> you're next with the financial statement. Yeah. So as you, so there's two sections. So I wanted to give you a copy of the revenues versus expenditures. So. That is the actual budget broke down by fund. 
and then the spreadsheet because I know there's 50 pages of all of the financial statements so I wanted to draw highlights and then let you decide if there's any questions outside of those highlights so I present I I made a PowerPoint um, it can change and grow it's a living breathing document that can change based on the needs so you so as for example as the swimming pool opens we'll break down how the swimming pool is doing as some of these projects that Sam is getting ready um, to work on with the pipeline and all of that we'll add the projects to it so we can have a one-stop shop per se of the financials and I think it's important that we do that each month and understand where those budgets are to the end of the year okay so um, January So general fund, as you know, and, and if anybody doesn't have, I gave you guys before all of the segments and the departments, if, if you need a copy of that, I think it's important that you have that to understand where each of these funds are and those departments. So, um, so breaking it down, general fund revenues, and this is just year to date comparison from 2020 to 2022. As you can see, um, healthy growth, within the, the property taxes. And as you know, property taxes are based on the mill levy. Um, and usually it starts out low, goes really, really what the, how the assessor collects the, the property taxes. So January, um, in line with our property taxes, uh, sales and use tax, 85,000, which is, as you see, that's a steady growth a steady growth for the last three years, which is really positive. Um, business taxes, um, big growth in that. Now, it's important to know how those business taxes, so business taxes, if you look at what that is, that's our cable vision tax, our um, Atmos franchise fee tax. Those come in, some of them are two months behind, they collect and it takes two months to get that. So sometimes that goes up and down. Um, cemetery, that's your grave openings, your sale of plots, um, calibarium sa uh, sales. Um, so $620 compared to at this time, $3,905. I don't know, you know, I'd hate to say what, what's causing that. Um, refuse, refuse is, um, and remember, we're due to, to end our refuse um, in April, correct? So we'll see that and you'll see that on the expenditures when it looks like it's really crazy out of line, but it should be because we only budgeted till, till that time frame. And then court fines, court fines um, we're collecting actually um, better than we have in the last three years. So that's, that's great. Going into um, some of the specific line items. So next page, total revenues. If you take the total uh, revenues for the budget. So each month, so we forecast. So as you're going forward, the budget is a 12 month living document. So each month is a percentage to that whole year. So um, as of now, as of January, we are 8% of our total budget. Our, our uh, general fund revenues are at 5.9%. And that is because how some of these taxes and revenues flow in. So January usually starts off slow for revenues, a little bigger in expenses. So some of, the, some of the big ones to look at is the refuse. So as you can see, it's 33% of budget. But remember, that budget really truly ends in April, okay? Um, and then the transfers. The transfers are management waterfront transfers. So that is the money that the water department gives to the general fund for specific things that the general fund does. Staffing, use of the building for billing, specific things. The police department that, ro that has to go in and patrol. So those are very specific. So 5.9% of the general fund revenues we've collected. It's a little below. But, but I'm not concerned. So if you look at the expenditures, 8% um, of the year is done in January. We are at 
10.8%. So when you break that down, you have some of these expenditures that are budgeted that I've already paid for the year. For example, the police, 11% compared to 8%, but we paid for the police radios. So that's $39,000. So, um, and then they had their visual labs, which is their body cam subscription for the year, and that's about 14,000. So some of those expensive ones are paid once a year at the first of the year, and that'll even out. Lori, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. I thought we had a grant for those radios that had come through. Did it fall through? No, we're just waiting for the reimbursement. Yes. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And most of the grants are pay first, get your money later. Um, refuse is on here again, uh, same reason. Um, and then other expenditures, 27%. Now, a lot of those other expenditures are some of the budgeted items that were approved for some of our nonprofits. The other big one is the Fremont County Shelter, $12,000. So I paid that, paid the, floor, uh, the chamber, um, so that's where that 18000 So you pay it once, then we're done, it'll even out. So we talked about any questions on expenditures for the general fund? Not, no, yeah. Lori? Yeah. You have, uh, we paid, uh, you talked about the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, talked about paying the uh, non-funded, uh, but did we send the money to the Pioneer Museum? They have to send me an invoice to get it. Okay. So there are, as you'll see on the bills allowed, as they're sending me their invoices, I'm paying them. Okay, I, uh, I got asked that question, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, any questions on the general fund? So that's all of the general fund which is the police department the streets the public works the cemetery all of those um, general operating expenses okay and then we'll kind of flip by sales tax this is where you'll see the breakdown for the departments on this page um, i'll have that for you for the gen for the next year's one okay so water fund Water fund is our enterprise department. Water fund is its separate fund. Um, so if you want to, if we break down their expenditures, 8% of the month, we're only at 4.7% 4 of expenditures. Um, some of the big notes are uh, chlorine at 11, uh, chemicals, which we've bought a shipment of chlorine. Um, we've also bought our, tur I'm gonna probably say this wrong, tur turbometer. We bought our turbometer, which was a budgeted item. That put the, the plant R&M um, up past that 8%. Um, we also um, paid our GIS membership. And uh, Sam bought um, his copper fittings, which flows in all year for water distribution. And then capital outlay, the new vehicle that we bought in January for the water department. So those are some of the, some of the highlights of the expenditures. Any questions on those? January is usually really simple. You're just mm -hmm. starting out and it's just um, paying those, those first of the year bills. Um, as far as uh, revenue, metered <coughs> water, that's the billing water. Um, we're at 8%, so we're in line for that. Debt retirement um, is in line. We have sold one uh, water tap. That's uh, where the water tap fees for Rockvale um, and Everything else is in line, 8.16. So actually the water fund is right online uh, to meet where, where it should be as far as forecasting goes. Any questions for the water fund? Do you guys like this format? Would you like something it's different? I just kinda, does it have to be exclusive to what I'm just, anything that's out of line, I'm gonna start putting it on there. Kudos to, to Lori for doing this. Um, you know, normally you get a stack of 50 pages of financials and you start, your eyes start to glaze over, at least mine do. And I said, Lori, you gotta make me smarter on this stuff. So come up with a way to uh, present this that's a little clearer. Um, and she's done a really good job of putting this together. So I'm really proud of her. She's done a really good job. And it exactly. does, and I, I would encourage you to, to read this, jot a note, give me a call. Um, I can research whatever that, that you need to. As we get in the months, I'm sure there's going to be, be something, especially with the bond payments and, and some of those things. Okay. 
So without further ado, Lori, don't go away. No, I don't go. I'm no, still here. We're going to action items. And the first item up is Lori again with bills allowed. Oh, Mayor. I have a question. We got a question? Yes, ma'am. Please. Mike, so we can hear, so everyone can hear. Um, I just had a quick question um, as far as where the Christmas bonuses come from. Like which GL or account those come from? Salaries. From salaries? Salaries. For each department? Uh -huh. yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Lori? Okay, action items. Bills allowed, Lori. Lori, do we have cheat sheets for these accounts? What kind of cheat sheet? Well, the, the, the GL account number so that we know where it's coming from. I, I thought we. I can make you one. Maybe eventually, not this moment, but I, I don't know. It would be helpful if um, now that it's on the um, action items, just so that. Um, I believe I have one I can email to you, Council. That would be really helpful. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. So, Tom, um, and I think this is a great idea with the bills allowed, moved it, and I hope I'm not saying this wrong, off the con consent agenda to the, to the mm -hmm. other agenda which I think is a great idea. Um, so what I think, <coughs> how, so how the, the bills and accounts payable go. The invoice comes in, the invoice um, goes to, um, we enter the invoice. There has to be an invoice for it to be entered. Um, then it goes into, um, the, I'll say my, my outgoing invoices. Once we have them all right before council, we print all the checks to match the invoices. Then from there, it prints the check register. And um, talking with, I think it was Gail and Tim, we decided to put it as a check number to be less confusing, because this is just a lot of, lot of information. So the checks stay as unsigned checks until it's approved by you. And then once you guys sign it, then the checks go out um, usually the following morning. Um, so if there's anything on here that you want pulled or want to talk about, they don't, they're, they're not paid per se yet until they're signed until the next day. So if there is something on here that you want pulled or you want to look at it or, or that, please don't hesitate because they're not paid yet. They're paid as far as the check's ready to go, but they can easily be voided and redone if we need to. And I think it's important on these, some of these are bills that we get every, every month. We're gonna pay some of these bills every month and then some of them should be to a budgeted item or that. So I'll kind of go, kind of hit them quick, pretty quick. And then as you guys get um, accustomed to like uh, some of the ones that are every month, um, you can ask or you can change how I'm doing it because Usually there's one bill run that's got a lot, and then there's one bill run that's a little shorter, like this one. Um, it just depends on how the bills flow in. So, um, so the check number, so the first one is the 5806, and that is Frigid Fluid Company, and that is a lowering device for the cemetery for when you lower the, yes. So that's what that is. Um, Sam and Jessica researched that to get that. It was a really big need to get to find that. Um, that come out of the cemetery? Yes. Yep. See where it says uh, invoice GL count? That's 12 is your cemetery fund. Um, okay. The next one is water bills postage. That will be a bill you will always see. That is to pay to send the water bills out. Um, the business license, a better tree service, um, Q, Q and her research found that we overcharge for a business license, so we reimburse the difference back to, to the company. 
Um, ALSCO, that is our uniform company, and those are a monthly bill you'll see um, every month for our uniform service for public works. Uh, AT&T, that's the monthly uh, cell phones for the city. You'll see that one every month. Uh, Canyon Rental, that's for the porta potties that you'll see around town at the Lions Park, at the skate park. Uh, Ma uh, Martin and his crew and Sam's crew, they have one they take with them on jobs. Uh, Dana Kepner is water distribution supplies. You'll see that sporadically because what happens is they'll make a big order and then it goes, it gets flowed in as Dana <coughs> Kepner gets it. So that's what that one is. E470 is, is a toll charge. Uh, the employer's council is travel expenses for Anne for her two days that she was here. Um, FedEx is for shipping that um, for any business licenses or anything that we send out through FedEx through our account. Fiber optics, uh, fiber platform is the monthly fiber optics for the police department. Um, Florence Arts Council was the budgeted item for them, $1,000. Um, Frontline is the yearly subscription and it's the, it's the subscription, it's for patrol watches um, for the police department. Um, Great American Financial Services is our printer lease. Um, a reimbursement for mileage for Jessica. Uh, Howard Disposals for some recycling fee. Uh, John Wysong, uh, Blood Draws for the PD. He's our uh, phlebotomist, phlebotomist. Um, and the police department uh, calls him out and he does the blood draws. Um, Master Printers, uh, Notary Supplies. Moore's uh, water samples to send out water samples. Um, a refund, uh, refund on overcharge for a police report. Police report, um, they found they overcharged. So that is a refund. Uh, Cora refund also. Uh, Jessica found that it didn't cost as much to do a Cora that she thought. Uh, preservation, the Pinion Environmental is the preservation grant that we have with the Florence High School. Those are all the bills. Those will be paid, they're paid, and then we'll get reimbursed for those. Uh, Pitney Bowes is our postage refill. Um, SGS AccuTest is results for those sam water samples that go out. Staples uh, delivers our office supplies. And then the UMB is our P card. So some of this is for the P card for those specific employees and that's their purchase card. And then some is for administrative fees for our 2021 bond. Um, UNCC is line locates, um, and those they send and then public work has to go find the water lines. And then another uh, reimbursement for uh, purchase birthday cards. When we do birthday cards, we put a little gift card for a sandwich or um, that, and there was something wrong with a P card, so I had to reimburse her for paying for that. So that is our expenses. Would you like me to continue to go line by line or would you guys, how would you like that to look going forward? How would, how, because this is the first time we've really went through it line by line. So I think it's important you know how to read it, know what, the, what those accounts mean. Should not be like this every time. I do understand that. But I wanted to start out like this and tell me what you want. Uh, City Council, any uh, questions, discussion? Thank you for doing it this time. Um, I appreciate your thoroughness and in making sure that we understand what's going on with our bills allowed. I think it's important. Um, but no, I hope moving forward that when we become more familiar with those um, routine amounts and expenses and what they're tied to, that we can sort of like focus it on anything that's more um, just different on that, that month's bills. Mr. Escobel? Good job, Lori. I like the way it came out. We can understand it. It's pretty simple, so thank you. 
Mr. Nisley? Could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. <No>, Allen. <laughs> Lori, I really appreciated all your, your hard work that went into your review of financials today. And thank you for going through every one of these for us. <laughs> I know. I, I, I think, you know, I've always tried to ask you if I had something yeah. I was concerned about. But thank you. So this is great. This is awesome. Thank you. I think it helps for the edification of everyone. Right. Mr. Vendetti? Yeah, thank you very much because it just uh, makes it a lot clearer as you go through it line item by line item. You know, I would just say this, that Lori, you've done a great job, but uh, Council, if you do have questions as you're reviewing your packet, don't be afraid to call Lori or come in and see Lori and ask a specific question. Then when she gives us all a breakdown, you will, I need, sometimes I need a lot of information. <laughs> Public. Any comments? Please. Hey. Um, I also appreciate the thoroughness of that. I thought that was great. Um, I was just hoping for clarification on Pinion Environmental. What was that again? So that is a grant. So this is this is not for the historic context yes. study? Yes, that's what it is. Okay, so it's not yeah. okay. I just yeah. wanted to clarify yeah. that it was not a historic preservation. I it, asked it is. John. Okay. Yeah. It's that grant from last year. Okay. Yes. Good to see that that's in motion. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, thank you. Thanks. Any further comments from the public? May I have a motion to accept the bills allowed? I make a motion we accept bills allowed. Second. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councilor Escobel? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Okay, sale of uh, refuge department. Sam? Uh, yes, sir. My name is Jose R. Solano. I live in Canyon City. I own a property at 816 Whipple. It looks like you've already made an RFP and I already have somebody has bought the assets for the trash company, is that correct? And who is that you have sold it to? All we have are bids right now. We don't have, we have not consummated the bid. Do you have a bid opening or a form? We had, we had a bid opening, yes. Okay, may I get one? Everything and that- still be allowed, and still be allowed I think the bid opening was the bid, Yeah, the bid opening closed. We announced it. Um, everyone had an opportunity. How long ago? How long ago, Sam? Two weeks ago. Do you have a date? Well, we had the bid opening on Thursday. So we went to 2 o'clock last Thursday. Where at? Here at City Hall. Well, was it published? In the pub, a local paper? And any outlying areas? Canyon's no paper. It's a piece of paper, and that's all it is anymore, <laughs> sir. And you know that as well as I do. Yes, I do. But we have to have go to paper. We do not do digital. Yes, but it should have gone public within Pueblo. Uh, the Tribune. The Daily Record and is our official city newspaper. I, I, know, I know it is. So that's why no we publish there. I have no qualms with you, young lady. No, and I don't either. I was just clarifying okay. that that's why I, we I publish our RFPs and paper, things like but that there. I know how much is in it now over the days, too. Good. Your obituary and one or two items, 
letters and that's it. But I think it should have been put out to the Tribune, to the Pueblo paper, to the Gazette, and to the Denver. And that's about $5,000 worth of ads. Yeah. Huh? That's about $5,000. I know worth that's $5,000 worth of ads, okay. but you're, you're also putting it out so the public is aware of what is going on in the city. Okay. And that's why I would like to know if you have already made the bid for this, because then I am going to try to do a class action suit against you. Can you answer me that question, sir? Have we already have we already accepted a bid? Yes. Um, not yet. City manager said we have not. We put it in the paper as we yes, were legally supposed already, to do. Yes, but you already you also have said. Uh, excuse me for interrupting. You also have said that you will not take any other we didn't say that. applicants. Yeah, we we closed the bid at two o'clock. Yeah. Now we closed the bid at two o'clock. We had two applicants who applied. We published it in the city's um, I, newspaper. I, I, I know that. Well, are you but, asking us to reopen the bid process? Yes, I am asking that as of right now. Well, I'm not sure that would be fair to the two bidders who have already come forward. I don't forward. care about the two bidders. They have their rights and their lawyers to deal with, but the city also has the right to go ahead and question that. And also, if there are quality people that used to run our trash service in, in Florence, which there was, and I know that for a fact, then why don't we give them a chance to do it? <coughs> do you have any questions, sir? I have no questions. Mr. Allen. No questions, sir. Mr. Escobel. No questions. No questions. Mr. Hardy. Then, is, are you going to reopen it or not? No. Okay. You're not going to reopen it? No. Okay. Thank you. Our next item is the uh, sale of you refuse department. Sam, please. Sure. Okay, as the gentleman is saying upon air, we did go out for bid in the public, in the paper, and everything of that nature. We've got two proposals for the equipment. We've got two uh, proposals from Howard Disposal and Twitter and Barrow. The equipment here, where it says totals, it should say totes on the top. Okay. For 1,008 totes, Howard has $5,544. For approximately 40 dumpsters, they have $2,560. For the truck itself, it's $23,850. The total is $31,954 from Howard. Clean for the totes on top. Coming at twenty-five thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, approximately forty dumpsters coming at twenty-four thousand. The truck coming in at one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which for a total of one hundred ninety-nine thousand two hundred dollars, for a difference of sixty-seven thousand two hundred forty-six bucks between the two companies. The staff recommendations that the equipment be sold to Twin and Barrow for one hundred ninety-nine thousand two hundred dollars. Discussion? What's the question mark uh, after the totals that says 1473 per month question mark and then sir is that and then services for twin and twin services? Uh, yeah, that's that's per month. That shouldn't be there. Okay. I'm sorry, but that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So we also went out for services two and fourteen different sites. It can include city hall, water treatment, uh, City Shop, all our parks around the area in downtown. Howard's come in at $1,473. Twin Navarro come in at $2,665. Two 
And the total difference of $1,192, uh, staff suggesting that we go under contract with Howard Disposal for $1,473 per month for directly to pick up within the city. That's what the city owns, the swimming pool, the parks, water treatment, city hall, public works department. That's per month. But those are two separate decisions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mr. Escobar? No questions on it. Mr. Nisley? No. Mr. Allen? No questions. Thank you, Sam. Ms. Wood? No questions. Mr. Nice Espinosa. job, Sam. Uh, Sam, I have been approached by a lot of our citizens, and uh, are we, have we committed to selling all the totes if we sell? Yes. Because a lot of the citizens would like to buy their totes from us. Yes, we had that discussion before and we decided to sell, sell the totes as a whole. Okay. Yep. That's 1,008 totes. I will tell them that then. Yep. Any public comment? None? Any further discussion? None? A motion to... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sam... I'm sorry. So, you know, public works didn't budget for any new equipment this year. We were wondering out of this sale of this equipment if we could purchase two three quarter ton pickups to replace our aging fleet. Something to think about. We'll put it on the agenda for next. Good. Yeah. So we need two motions. I would make a motion that we sell the equipment to Twin Enviro. Second. Second. Further discussion? None? Public? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? No. Then we need to make, I make a motion that we go with Howard, with uh, Howard service. Second. Okay. Discussion. Mr. Escobel? None. Mr. Nicely? No. Mrs. Wood? No. Mr. Vendetti? No. Public comment? Roll call, please. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escobel? Yes. Councilor Nicely? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next item is the Oak Creek Grill and Tavern LLC Liquor Lation Renewal. <laughs> Jessica, please. All of the paperwork has been submitted. The fees have been paid. Gary? Good evening. Any comments, sir? We started a new menu today. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take green chili off. And I didn't stay okay. at the Hilton. <laughs> as long as you haven't changed that food no. menu. I'm with you. No, it's all good. So the Salisbury steaks are on there now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Got a eight inch grinder going on special for Wednesday. Let me know when the half a slopper goes on. We got pizza burger, you know, <laughs> all kinds of cool stuff. Strange, but looks good. Hey, <laughs> it works good too. Yeah. <laughs> Council, any discussion on this? No. Any public comment? May I have a motion to? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the Oak Creek Grill and Tavern LLC liquor license renewal. May I have a second? Second. No further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escobel? Yes. 
Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. There you go, sir. Thank you, folks, very much. Thank you, you Gary. Appreciate Thanks, it. Gary. The next item we have is the uh, approval to transfer previously purchased union dish shares to Rockville and Coal Creek. Mr. Pilton's route, sir. Well, I think you understand the issue. Um, city purchased uh, agricultural shares from the Camarillo Dairy, and the previous city manager um, sold shares. Um, to the entity to two entities um cold creek, and cold creek and rockvale and while there wasn't any authorization to sell the shares that i could find in past minutes um nonetheless it was pretty much a done deal i mean we had offer acceptance and consideration we had a we had a verbal contract with the entities for these shares and they've kind of been asking where are their shares so tonight I'm asking you to approve the sale of those shares so that Jessica can, be the, can begin the transfer to Cold Creek and Rockvale of their shares without getting into any other issues unless you want to discuss them about <clears throat> the use of an agricultural share versus a municipal use share. Um, I went to the mayor's meeting with, with Mayor Villagrana and we described and discussed with the mayors the some of the issues associated with just agricultural shares, they understand they can't use them to uh, fulfill subdivision or water tap requests. And in the event we do go forward with a change case to water court, um, they will then be noted entities in the case as parties. Any questions for me? It's not so much a question, I, I, but I think we were under the impression at that time that whenever you was in the burbs and wanted a water tap, you to purchase that water tap, you had to bring a water share with you. And that was the, the comment that we made, was that we would enable them to buy more water shares if we provided them with ditch shares. We can, they can, I'm not sure I understood the question. Can you restate the question? You're saying? That, that if, you, if you lived in Cole Creek or Rockville in Williamsburg and you wanted to buy a water tap, you couldn't buy that water tap unless you had a water share, an agricultural water share to turn in for that. And then you still had your tap fee as well. Now, not many of those ditch shares are available so much anymore. Right. And so we thought that, uh, or at least the discussion was that if we made some available to these towns, that they would just in turn turn the agricultural share back to us when they bought the additional taps. And I think that's the only conversation we had on it. Yeah, I, you know, I don't have an issue with it. Um, you could make the argument that the sale of these shares to the entities actually does benefit the city of Florence because when these shares are transferred in water court to municipal use, then the entities will have more water rights, which will allow them to sell more water taps. Right now, the entities' uh, water rights um, are somewhat limited. The Coal Creek Pipe and the Rockville May Ditch are not always the most robust water right in times of drought. So the entities have been accumulating some water, um, some water shares through the water court. They did it in our last court case, 99 CW 149, which allowed certainly Williamsburg uh, a number of, of uh, ditch shares transferred to municipal use as a direct flow right that the city can then pump. We can only pump rights that are in priority. And if the Cold Creek pipe, the Williamsburg pipe, and the May ditch are not in priority, then Brandon can't pump them. So in effect, then they're using city of Florence water if they're outside their right. So this will allow us to kind of rectify that. And I've asked the mayors to, um, we're gonna regenerate and reinvigorate the, the regional water committee, and we're gonna start making them monthly meetings so that we can engage the mayors and the representatives from the entities uh, about what we need to do in the future as it concerns water. We're approaching um, severe drought in the West. And uh, you know, we all, all of us, the entities and Florence need to start thinking about um, how much more annexation do you, do you think we need to do? Because if you annex property, you guarantee municipal water. The same is true with the entities, I assume. I have not read their municipal codes, but I assume that's true for them also. 
So we need to have those discussions in regional water, and then they need to take those discussions back to their town boards and back to the city of Florence council and have these, and, and have these discussions and education about where we are on, on water and drought because there, there's going to be some significant shortages, I think, coming up if this drought continues. Uh, there's three things, Alan, that I think that uh, we need to get clarification on. Uh, City Clerk, number one is, has Coal Creek and Rockville paid for those shares, the 30 and 25? Yes, they have. And they have receipts on that? Yes, they do. Uh, the second thing is that uh, needs to be known is that uh, shares inside city or inside the communities themselves, there is no water shares need to be given when you get a water tap outside the city limits or outside they have to bring a share with them right so i'm assuming that the entities are the same way as long mm -hmm. as they're with inside their community they don't have water shares that one so the other thing that i think that uh, needs to be discussed here is that you know uh the fact that we are headed and uh in case nobody knows, but up north is having one heck of a time. And they are dunning all kinds of people. Uh, the South Platte River, Nebraska is dunning them. Uh, the, um, um, the towns uh, in north have asked, I'm talking about Denver and Aurora and those places, are trying to get water from other people. And in terms of aquifers, they are trying to say, you can't close them down, and they're closing them down. So it's really important, as Tom has stated, that we pay attention to what we do. Uh, Mr. Escobel, you and I are on the original water committee. So hopefully we'll both be there. And it, we really need to keep all the city council and all our citizens informed as far as that goes about our water. Florence is very blessed in the terms that we do have water. We have water at the dam. We have senior water rights. But you know what? It doesn't mean nothing if the river goes dry. So it is with that intent that we discuss this, and I really implore the uh, council to go ahead and let's give them the unadjudicated water rights. Uh, Jessica, how many we're in water court right now, right? No. No, no, we are not. No. I thought we had 800 shares that we're trying to get adjudicated. We have not entered a water court case yet. We haven't yet. So that's something that we have to look at. Yes. Okay. Sorry. So any further discussion? So it's your recommendation that we go ahead and fulfill that sale? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Any public comment? I would entertain a motion to uh, transfer the previously purchased union ditch shares to Rockville and Coal Creek. I'll make a motion that we transfer the uh, uh, ditch shares to Rockville and Coal Creek. Second, please. Second. No further discussion? Yeah, just to just to reassure, just to uh, make it a little clearer, 25 shares to Coal Creek and 30 shares to Rockville. Could we add that to the motion, make it a little clearer? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Motion so amended. I'll make the motion so amended. Thank you. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Public input? Not. Roll call, please. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escobel? Yes. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Nisley? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next item is resolution number 2022-0703A, a resolution adopting a policy for city-issued cell telephones. Tom, please. Uh, I didn't bring my cell phones in because I'm not sure I know how to turn them off yet. <laughs> but if I have a city cell phone in my left hand and my personal cell phone in my right hand, what should be on the left hand is boring city business. And what should be on the, or the right hand, and what should be on the personal phone 
is even more boring business as it concerns my personal life. For example, the Florence Husky upcoming baseball schedule. Because we're playing baseball at Florence, the Major League Baseball can't seem to get their act together. So what happens, what happens is that the old city manager locked his phone. So there was no way really to look at his phone to determine what was on it. Um, so this policy was driven by my intent to ensure that a policy was written that city phones can no longer be locked. And Jessica then decided that we needed a little more than just that, which is true. So she um, was able to pull together a, a really comprehensive um, use on, on cell phones. And so inside that resolution is a, a little discussion about what happens if a cell, city cell phone is damaged or lost. You know, if you're, if Sam's working in a in a water pit trying to trying to plug a giant um, water leak, and his cell phone inadvertently falls out of his pocket into the bottom of the trench, um, is that a line of duty? Was he on duty when he did that? Yes, he was. Was it uh, an accident? Yes, it was. Should Sam have to pay for that cell phone? I don't believe so. However, if Sam's on a, a Caribbean cruise and it falls out of his pocket. Uh, on his Caribbean cruise, then I'm sorry, Sam, you're going to have to pay for that phone. So this allows the city manager to make those kind of line of duty determinations, the old army term, line of duty. And it also prohibits locking of the phone, and I think it's a clear um, policy that we really need to adopt. I would urge its adoption. Any questions for me? I didn't see that it said that all city business must be conducted through the city cell phone. Well, here's the problem. Um, you can have a Hillary moment where some of your information on your BlackBerry <laughs> goes to your personal phone and some of your personal information goes to the city phone. We certainly would tr strive to ensure that that doesn't happen, but even Hillary had it happen. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that it doesn't happen. It does, and that's just the, the way the game is played. So, yeah, we'll, we'll redoubt, we double our efforts to try and ensure that City business is on this phone and personal business is on this phone, but you make a good point. What type of enforcement mechanism would be used? I don't have any other, I mean, if someone refuses, if someone locks their phone, in, or, yeah. well, then there's going to be a write-up. Uh, that would be the enforcement. So how do you know it's locked? Well, um, I guess unless I wouldn't gonna... unless I examine their phones, and I'm probably not going to do that. But if it came to my attention that sort someone did that. honor system. Yeah, honor system. I honor and trust all our employees, so. Councilor Allen, it does say in the policy that the city does have the discretion to inspect your city-owned cell phone at any time. I'm not in the cell phone inspection business, so. Yeah, I think that would happen, like something unusual happens, <laughs> yeah. it's brought to the attention, yeah. and then we. Yeah. yeah. Any further discussion? Public input, yes, sir. Just real quick, I didn't, is this on? Um, our body, our phone is also our body cam. It does a lot of police um, applications. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page that uh, stuff, stuff, some things that are on there might have to have a code. I don't know what that is, but I'd like to be able to go through that with you okay. before sure. we say yeah, that's right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Same here, Tommy. Any public comment? Okay. Mr. Sullivan, please. I got a question, Tom. Don't lock the uh, city phones. Yes. And inadvertently, you have a Hillary moment. What if your phone's locked? Can you? Is I don't there going to be a resolution to that? <laughs> I don't know how to lock my phone. So I don't either. Happen. But should that be considered? If I do it, anybody. Yes. Uh, I, I, about them. Uh, being able to lock their own personal phone since there may be a Hillary moment. To well, happen. yeah, I mean, I can't. Uh, just yeah. something to consider. I understand. I just have to trust their honesty on, on this. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and we can't, we can't regulate personal cell phones. No, we can't regulate personal cell phones. So. Right. Yeah. And now, there's also a form that I see in our uh, packet that addresses that issuance of cell phones 
that the citizens have to sign and the department heads? Uh, the employee will have to sign if they are issued a, a city yeah. cell phone. Yes, yeah. acknowledging the policy. Any further discussion? None? No further public comment? Roll call, please. We need I, a motion. I'd like to so we had a motion. I'll make a motion to pass resolution number 2022-7-03A, resolution adopting a policy for city-issued cell phones. Second. No further discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next item is resolution number 2022-0703B, a resolution amending the city public employer handbook to include personal manual selection section. Tom? Um, what am I doing here, Jessica? The employee advances resolution. Oh, employee advances. Oh, this just includes a prohibition against employee advances, um, which was in, inadvertently left out of the personnel manual section when it was revised in March of what, 2021? 2020. 2020. 21, sorry. 21? Okay. Yes, sorry. Any questions? We don't want to go down that road again. Yeah. Any don't further discussion? Road. City Council? Any city input? Yes, ma'am. Gail Nelson, 118 West 4th Street. Um, I shared this with you today, Mayor, and you were not, I'm sure, didn't have time to read it all. But I do have a concern uh, about the public employer handbook, and I'm afraid that you all are going to be making a new resolution every time you meet. Um, the new employer handbook does not cover half of what was in the 1995 um, handbook, just the resolution that we're talking about now. Um, there were seven resolutions, I'm sorry, six, seven resolutions in the old handbook that were not carried over to the new handbook. One of them being employment of family members, which is the nepotism, which you all talked about a couple months ago. There's all, there was a resolution on that. It's in the employee handbook, the old one. It looks like, I read the new handbook, and it looks like it's a template done from Employers Council. In fact, on the bottom of each page, page it says Employers Council. It also says in, um, on page four, it says, this sample language is appropriate for public employers following at will employment. Public employers that use a system of due process could choose a sample below. That's in your employee handbook. It's a sample. Was this ever even approved? Can we really be using this handbook? Um, I think that's something that uh, needs to be looked into because things that were inadvertently, as um, our city manager said, they were left out. So we really need to go through and look at the old handbook and the new handbook. It's difficult for the employees to follow the rules if they don't know what the rules are. And if you look at the new handbook, it's very general, which is why we just did a resolution on the cell phones, and now we're doing a resolution on advancement of, of wages. With, there's sick leave is in there. Um, vacation days are in there. Um, in the old one that says no, you can't, as Tim said, no, you cannot get money for that. So there are a lot of things and an, an outside HR might be able to help you with that. Um, I know we use paychecks in our company and they will give you updates on Colorado law immediately, <coughs> which is I think something we also need. But I know this kind of went off the, of, the resolution you're doing, but you're going to be doing them every two weeks 
unless we really get a good employee handbook. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Didn't you actually comment on that in yes. your report? Pardon me? Didn't you actually comment on that in I your did not report? comment on Gail's um, issues here. I just did the, uh, the two resolutions we're doing tonight. No, I know, but in our report, I thought she was going to look at that and maybe make changes as needed. Well, we certainly can. Yeah. Um, and I will certainly take what G Gail just gave me. I thought that yeah, was your yeah. intentions, yes. Yeah. I will certainly take a look at it. She's obviously, she certainly have been correct so far on two of them. Yeah. We just amended them. So. <laughs> Any further discussion? I will accept the motion to approve resolution number 2022-0703B. I'll make a motion. Um, that we approve resolution resolution number 2022-07-03B, a resolution Second. amending the city's public employer handbook to include personnel manual section. 6-8. May I have a second? Second. Further discussion? Other public comments? None? Roll call, please. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Escobel? Yes. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Nicely? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next item is resolution number 2022-0703C, a resolution amending fees and repealing all of the resolutions associated with the administrative fees. Ma'am? Um, so Public Works and I were looking at some of the street closure requests that have been coming in and several of them have been asking for the city to provide street closure materials like barricades, closed signs, cones. Um, most of these events end up being on the weekends. Now the city doesn't have any problem doing that, um, but we looked at implementing a fee and a deposit to do so. Um, since we have to cover la cover labor for a weekend and then of course if the materials are returned damaged or not returned that does come out of the public works budget um, so what we looked at doing was a um, hundred and fifty dollars the hundred dollars is a deposit fifty dollars is to cover the labor for somebody to come in and drop those off pick them back up after the event is done and then given that everything's returned in good uh, condition, we would then refund the $100. In updating our administration fee schedule, um, I noticed that bulk water cards and the peddler's mm -hmm. license were incorrect on there. So I went ahead and updated those since we were in there updating some fees. Any questions? Discussion. Melissa? No question. Anthony? No question. Alan? No. Mr. Alan? Yes. Um, so it's just a flat 150? Yes. Does that cover all Sam's time? I doubt it. No. It was mainly equipment. Just equipment? Is it like equipment per block if they're just closing one block or if, if it's like for something that's taking up the entire downtown area, then you're, you're stopping numerous blocks. Does that go up at all? Okay. How often does that happen, Sam, that you get? Your stuff back, it's all broken. At least one. Every event, I'll put it that way. Every event? <laughs> okay. So there's a $150 deposit, and then what's the, the fee for the street closure in itself? Um, we don't have a fee for the street closure itself, so this would kind of then be a fee for the street closure. And they, they get that back? or They get the $100 back as long as we get the materials back. Would there be a street fee for the state highway that goes through our town? No. I'm just wondering if we should kind of maybe relook at those fees and see. I don't know how much. I'm sure when your guys come in, I know I've, for some of these events, Sam, your people are out there at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. 
um, and it's two, three hours, and then you got to come back later at sometimes at night and remove everything, which is another two, three hours of, of overtime. So I, I think there should should be some kind of fee for the street closure, and then adding on the deposit for um, damage damaged materials if the, if they get it back. So I, w I would approve that, but I think we should relook at that some more. We'll look at it. Um, obviously, if you're talking about a street closure at Louis for a street dance, that's a lot different than a street closure for Pioneer Day. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. We can revisit yeah. the stuff, and when we get damaged materials, we And the checks in the mail. And I'm just wondering, our police department gets involved with a lot of those street closures during the time that uh, a parade's going on or other things. Is that correct, Chief? As far as barricades, they handle all of that. No, I realize that, but I've noticed that we have officers that are kind of stopping traffic. We even have the uh, police cadets that do that. So usually um, I try to use officers that are on duty that day. Um, Fourth of July being the exception, we need more people for that day. Um, so we, don't, we haven't really charged for that um, in the past. Um, as far as the cadets, they're voluntary. Um, our reserve officers are voluntary. Um, but we do have a couple requests this year for overnight security at a couple of the events. And that's something that me and Lori are looking into as far as how do we charge that, how do they pay it, et cetera. So we're, we're looking into that type of thing. I think that should be looked at into the... I think the size of the event definitely needs to be looked at. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm good with that resolution. Then we can just re relook at it. Would yeah. you like to table it until the next meeting to get some more information? So, do we want to table this resolution until yes. next? Let's meeting? table it till next yeah. meeting if we could. Public input. Yes, sir. I would accept the motion to table this resolution. I make a motion that we table the resolution. Oh, gosh, I've lost it now. Second. Further discussion? Further city uh, input from the citizens? Roll call, please. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Resolution number 2022-07-03-D. A resolution amending fees and repealing all other resolutions associated with water tap deposit and installation fees. Sam? As you guys recall, last year about this time, we had an increase in our water installation fees and some meter pits. Meters, et cetera, and stuff like that. We got another one from our Pope. Our prices has risen. So this is just a collection of, this is just to revise the uh, installation fees or the parts that we need to install it. This is not a tap increase by any means. This is just materials for us to do the installation of the physical tap. These prices have increased slightly. Some went down slightly. Question, City Council? I have one. Uh, Sam, uh, I noticed that Willow, is that Willow Creek? Yes. That's outside the city limits? Inside. inside. Is it inside. inside? Okay. That answers my question. Any city input? Further discussion? 
then I would accept the motion to adopt resolution 2022-07-03-D. Make a motion we adopt resolution number 2022-07-03-D. It's a resolution amending the city's water tap installation fee schedule. May I have a second? Second. Further discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Councillor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. For our upcoming agenda item, introduction of outside human resource representative, representative mayoral appointment to planning commission and parking, Committee cost computation. Any further items that we need to put on the agenda of the City Council? Melissa? Mm -hmm. Anthony? No. Ellen? Brian? Yes, sir. Crystal? Mike? No. I do. I, I have one. I think that uh, we need to take a look at our cost of our water tap comparison with everybody. I know that uh, Pueblo West has, uh, will not issue more than six water taps. And it's my understanding they're pretty expensive. I know that somebody said that in Colorado Springs or Denver, it's up to fourteen, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a water tap. So we might have to take a look at that. And Brian, <laughs> you're shaking your head. It's a good thing that we need to look at. Correct, sir? Okay. Okay. Any further items? Tim's got, his hand. Tim's got a question or a suggestion. I wanted to make note of this earlier since I didn't have a lot of time to talk. I forgot. Um, someone up here had mentioned about once the city, former city attorney was terminated to make sure he turned over all documents. So I wanted to read this core request I did in March. Okay. <clears throat> so just give me a couple minutes. <clears throat> I submitted this on March the 17th of 2021 to former city manager Mike Patterson. Uh, pursuant to Colorado Open Records Act 2472-201, I request that you make available for inspection and copying the following public records. Any and all records pertaining to any and all former City of Florence employees, including but not limited to any settlement agreements, letters of resignations, non-disclosure agreements, payout amounts, and memos from the time period of September 1, 2019 to and including March 17th of 2021. So Jessica, I asked for, I requested a waiver of fees. Jessica responded back. I reviewed your core request for employee personnel files and I'm emailing today to let you know what the next steps are. This request will take more than three working days to gather these materials based upon the volume of documents to review and to order to respond to the core request. And as such, I, I will also need to let you know the fees for the request will likely exceed $200 because of the significant amount of time. So I come back and I modified it. To help facilitate the records research, I'd like to modify my core request. Any and all records pertaining to any and all former city employees regarding settlement agreements and non-disclosure agreements from the time period of January 1, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. So Jessica responds back, I'm waiting on the attorney to get back to me on what I can disclose under CORA. I should have an answer by this afternoon and we'll let you know. So Jessica did the process and it went to the city attorney and he lets her know. I didn't get a call from Jessica. I got a call from Mike Patterson who told me there was one responsive record and it wasn't his. Yet in you all's statement, it was very clear that a settlement agreement had been reached with a previous employee. Why I didn't get this and why it wasn't denied in statute by the city attorney, I don't know. But I wanted to make sure it was on record. You could, should probably get a hold of that because it is your document and it is your record, and it's in the police report. Now, as to why the city attorney never provided the city clerk a denial on a record that exists, 
That's something you're going to have to take up with him. I hope you get the record. It should be your record. It shouldn't be his record. And as to why the city, former city manager injected him into that process and responding, I don't know. But since it probably involved him, that's probably why. So the next section with executive sessions, we don't have an attorney to seek legal counsel advice with, right? So we can drop that one. Yes. And then the second one, um, do you, Tom, or the mayor, anybody else have anything to discuss with us for matters of negotiation related to the litigation filed by Ms. Audrey and Ms. Hilf? No, city attorney needs to drive that. Yes. So then, Count I'm sorry, council. Um, we do have city special counsel here to uh, facilitate uh, executive session number one. What? I Sursa has uh, hired a special counsel to help facilitate with that request, and oh. he is here and would like to discuss that with you. So I would, with that knowledge, I would accept the motion to go into executive session for the lit advice. notice litigation. Is Jessica, this, no. Could Jessica. I could I say something? Uh, the Sursa attorney, where are you? Are you comfortable in meeting with city council without our city attorney present? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I would accept the motion to go into executive session for uh, number one. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Can I have a motion, you please? Want public comment first before we make a decision. After the motion. motion. Mo motion. Comment after motion and second. Okay. Um, so, Paul, then I'll make a. Can you restate the motion, please, more thoroughly? Just read the whole. Accept the motion to go into executive session to receive legal advice on specific legal questions pursuant to CRS 246-4024-B concerning the notice of litigation by Nicole Phelps under Colorado's open meeting laws. Thank you. So that's the one we're going for, not the, the other one. Right. So I need a motion, please. I make a motion to go into executive session. May I have a second? Second. Discussion? None here. Uh, the uh, citizens motion? Yes, please. Gail Nelson, Chairman of the Planning Commission. I just wanted to publicly thank Sean Garrett, who's not here tonight, uh, for the work that he has done as the Planning Director. He wasn't here very long, but we, I think I speak for the whole uh, Commission, that um, he has done a wonderful job as Planning Director, and he has um, improved a lot of the things that we have done and had a lot of plans uh, for us in the future. I know Don Moore is a good city planner. He's been here, excuse me, he's been here in the past and I hope that um, the things that, that Sean wanted to do um, will be carried out by Don and I hope that we spend quite a bit of time on finding another planning director. I believe, Tom, you're the one that needs to do that. It's not We've a council thing. You've already announced yeah. it? Great. Yeah. But I did want to publicly thank Sean Garrett for that. We had another person in the city that wanted to address this. Question, Tom. Mm -hmm. I seem to be hitting you up pretty hard tonight. Uh, has there been any more discussion or determination of another city manager yet? Not a question for me. For the council. Uh, Mark, as far as my knowledge is that we were waiting for the... Uh, uh, Background checks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has come in, so the city council has to look that over. 
and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. I'd like to suggest that if Tom's amenable to it, stick around for a year. We need you. <laughs> if if it'd work, uh, I'd rather not change the horse in the middle of the stream. I'm with you, but we'll have to talk to him. <laughs> Tonight was so much fun. I'll give us some time. <laughs> <laughs> We can't, we can't tell you to go fishing, <laughs> but yeah, we could sure use uh, your trustworthy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we had a motion to go into executive section and seconded. Uh, there's no other comments. Roll call, please. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Hardy? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana. Yes. So at uh, 845, we'll take five minutes. And Could the CERSA attorney come up, please? <laughs> Who would you like present in your executive session with us? Let's see. In addition to council. Everyone on the dais. Okay. Thank you. Everyone. Everyone on the dais. Oh. Okay. It's eight forty-six. We'll take five minutes, and we will convene in our.
don't need to do any. It's 9.28, and we are back in session for our regular city council meeting. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Councilor Hardy. Yes. Was the second. Sorry. Councilor Allen? Yes. Councilor Hardy? Yes. Councilor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escabel? Yes. Councilor Nicely? Yes. Councilor Vendetti? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. 928 and meeting is adjourned. <laughs>